I'm Evgeny from Fluence, uh, and uh, I'm going to talk to you about the decentralized database networks, what it is, uh, why we need it, and uh, how it could be built. So uh, blockchain technology is uh, a great thing. It uh, can be used to organize a wide variety of uh, decentralized trustless networks, and uh, it can be used not only to build the cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, uh, it can be built. It can be used as a foundation of uh, different decentralized applications and the whole decentralized internet. And uh, let's think a little bit uh, about what decentralized applications are. Or, for example, some great projects try to organize uh, independent hardware, independent resources to a network, to uh, one distributed computational platform, and to instead of calculating useless hashes uh, to do some useful work, for example, scientific computations or rendering video or something else. Uh, other projects also try to build decentralized web services. So it's, it's possible to build a decentralized website that cannot be shut down by any censorship, uh, any authority or censorship organization or government. And the same thing with for example, decentralized messengers. Uh, it's possible to build a messenger app where your data is never disclosed to any party. And uh, for example, also data marketplaces. Are, it's possible to build the service where you can store and share and monetize your personal data and keep the data under control uh, without the single point of failure and uh, any, any third party access. So, um, all of, all of these services are basically use the data and they store data somewhere. And uh, if we try to uh, store data in a decentralized fashion, let's think how it can be, how it can be really stored. Uh, but at first, let's think about how it's stored in traditional world. So roughly speaking, in traditional world, the data is stored in uh, two flavors, structured and unstructured. So structured data is stored in databases, and unstructured in files. And databases are basically spreadsheets with your data, and files are basically black boxes, so you don't know what's inside until you open it. And uh, the difference becomes essential when you have your data stored on a remote machine. So imagine that we are in a, in a hospital, for example, and we have a list of patients uh, in, our, in our database. And uh, we want to find those ones who are ready to be discharged tomorrow. If all of them are stored in a file, we have to download it first, then scan through all the file and find, find uh, results that we need. In, uh, and th this takes time and, and resources. So in, in a database example, uh, databases have special index that points to specific entries in, in our database. So we just can look at, at the index and see and find uh, results that we need. And it, uh, it, it, it does these things much more faster. So if a hospital would have a website, it definitely would use a database instead of just keeping all the data in the files. And, uh, but let's get back to our decentralized world. We have a blockchain, and blockchain basically is a database. Uh, and let's think, uh, can we store big amounts of data in a blockchain? And uh, if you look at the numbers, that this is like not exact number, they are changing every day, but uh, to upload one gigabyte of data to a public blockchain like Ethereum or Bitcoin, we need a few days and a uh, few millions of dollars. And this is just, we cannot just use it. And uh, imagine that we want to create a decentralized Wikipedia to create a, a public humanity knowledge or for like f the free of uh, any censorships or governments. So English Wikipedia compressed uh, takes about 15 gigabytes of data. And uh, to upload it to, to a blockchain, we need 100 million. Uh, and if you take the history of edits, uh, it will be 700 million. If you take other languages, it will be more. So we also have decentralized file storage projects. Uh, these projects allow us to 
upload and download files in, in a decentralized network. But they have the same problem. If we want to do some query, some request to our data, uh, we just cannot do that. We have only files. We have to download it first to our local machine. And uh, that's where decentralized database network uh, can be useful. And uh, let me give you just a quick impression uh, how it could be built and uh, what challenges we have. So first thing is uh, data replication. Uh, blockchain by design is a fully replicated database. So we have nodes and each node keeps the same copy of the whole uh, blockchain. And uh, that's why it doesn't scale. We cannot just copy all the data to all the machines. And uh, that's why for a decentralized database, we can just pick small groups of nodes that will be responsible for a particular part of data. So we can organize uh, machines to clusters. And uh, that's how we can put like any amounts of data, almost any amounts of data to a network. We can just create a new clusters for new uh, data sets. And uh, if some node goes offline or becomes malicious or just cut, cut off the network by any authority, we just have other copies of our data on other machines and uh, data is still online. And uh, here are a few more challenges. Next thing is uh, we need a way to verify that our like, data is there and uh, our requests responded correctly because we create a decentralized network that rely on untrusted machines of independent owners. Uh, we need a way to check that when we ask a network for some data, it responds correctly. So we can keep the hash, the state of a database on a, on a blockchain and not to put all the data on a blockchain. And this hash helps a client that don't have any data to check that result that it, it received from a network is correct. Next thing is performance. In traditional world, databases uh, can process thousands of requests per second on a single machine. And uh, current blockchains like give you few few dozens of, of transactions per second. And uh, that's why we need to create the direct communication channels between the clients and the nodes that keeps data and only periodically uh, timestamp the results to, to a blockchain. And it works uh, almost the same as a Lightning Network, where you have the direct transactions between two parties, and uh, only the results uh, comes to, to a global chain. Next thing is uh, data encryption. Because we rely on, on uh, untrusted machines, uh, we, we should have the encryption of our data. And uh, in case of files, it's uh, relatively easy. So we encrypt file on a client, we upload it to, to a network, and it's protected. But uh, if we want to perform queries, we, we want to perform the, uh, some, some requests on top of this data, we need to create the encrypted index on top of this data. And uh, if we, in, and this is the, I would say, active area of research. So we, we need to find the right balance between data safety and uh, the, uh, the type of requests that we allow to do with our data. Because if we do some kind of requests, we have to uh, disclose some knowledge about our data. For example, total count of, of the entries or one, like for example, we can, we can um, we may disclose timestamp of our entries. And uh, also we have to, we need to, to have the data availability and we need to create the incentivization layer for data availability to motivate nodes to keep data online. So it works like if I'm a client and uh, I, I, I store data on some nodes, I, and this node goes offline and lose my data, I have to be compensated in some way. And uh, otherwise, if I refuse to pay for storage, node have to be compensated. 
And that's why before putting the data on the network, the smart contract on the blockchain should be created. And uh, these contracts should be funded by both parties, by client and the node with security deposits. And these security deposits works like the insurance. And uh, they are paid to, to one party if other party uh, lies or operates incorrectly. So this motivates both parties to operate correctly. And the final thing is uh, we need to have an open market of hardware because different clients uh, can have different workloads and different data types and different uh, request types and uh, different nodes. They have different hardware. And uh, open market just allows uh, clients to find the, the best hardware and the best node owners to find ideal clients. And uh, finally, what we have, we, we have the database network that distributes data across different locations uh, to different to independent hardware owners, secures data with end-to-end -end encryption and effectively reduce price for storage uh, by creating an open hardware market. Just a few use cases of this. So it can be used for any kinds of public data, for example, as our Wikipedia example, or private data as our hospital example, or any other personal data, business data, and anything. And few more examples. So we can create, for example, the patient-controlled medical rec records using the decentralized database. Or we can create the decentralized wiki leaks, for example, that cannot be stopped by any government. Or we can process huge amounts of data just because we have almost infinite scalability. And uh, yeah, that's what we are building at Fluence. And thank you for your attention.